Alrighty, so I have been noticing that my Van der Falkata Kibana keeps stopping with her root growth just about at the point where she is going to be touching the ceramus. That is definitely no bueno because this is an extremely slow grower and any roots that she would produce for me are much, much needed. And for that reason, we are going to change up the media just a little bit. But there is another reason we're going to do a little bit of an adaptation, hopefully to get the roots to grow, but that is also preempting any possible high humidity summer coming up the way I had in 2023 where I lost a lot of miniature orchids. High humidity is wonderful but not if you have a setup that has a water retentive media in it like Ceramis which is all geared towards an extremely dry climate which I have. 30% is my average. 2023 summer taught me differently. Now I don't mind having a water retentive media because it helps me when it comes to watering orchids when it is that dry but I have to come to terms with the fact that I may have another very high humidity summer and then I prefer to keep watering a little bit more as opposed to losing orchids. I'm really happy to see that the roots that were in the ceramis are still viable even though they do look brown on the top but they did some exponential growth from when I put this into the ceramis a couple of years ago whereas I've already lost three other of my speciality falcatas. So this is not the classic Van der Falcata which is doing great great in its self-watering setup. <laughs> this is one of those speciality ones and oh boy is it slow and I don't want to lose it. It's the last one standing out of the four in total that I had once upon a time. And you can see how the root tips have stopped growing. They didn't even touch the ceramis. It was like they were approaching and they were like yeah no we're not going anywhere near that. I have brought out every little kind of inorganic media that is not water retentive with the exception of the lava rock of course but I'm gonna have to wait and see what I'm going to be doing. One thing for sure because it's a semi-hydroponic setup I do need my crocking. I'm not going to use only ceramics down there but then my next layer has to be a little bit more wicking because there has to be something in order to bring the water up. If I'm going to be using a top layer of absolutely non-water retentive media so I do need a little bit of something to help me out there. So I've got horticultural grit, two different varieties and little pebbles that I saved from re pottings of rapiculous lelias. <laughs> I'm telling you nothing goes to waste here. Anywho what I want to do with this one this time instead of using a wire to somehow keep her stable which is not always guaranteed is to give her a little basket that she can sit in so to speak as her support but with that I have to fandangle an active root tip through this and these roots are not absorbing water so there's no way to soak them to make them more pliable. It was quite the fiddle third time's a charm <laughs> but you see where I'm getting at what I want to achieve I would like the orchid to be as stable as possible at least one of the roots that has stopped growing because that is in their nature they stop growing then they start to absorb water at least we've got that far so potting her back up should be relatively easy and straightforward but I am making sure that the roots that were all the way down at the bottom of her pot are now back all the way down at the bottom of the pot because that is what they're used to. And filling this pot up with the media I have planned, well, it's a bit of a nightmare because I don't want to be bashing on anything, but I can't fill it up with water either. I'm just taking my sweet time. One spoon after another. Also facing it away from the orchid so nothing actually bashes the root tips. You see the ceramis? I do need that. I can't now go with a non-water retentive media. There are still the old roots that I have to take into consideration because of how their velamen behaves. And I'm keeping the orchid a little bit low in the pot for the time being. Once I'm happy with what I'm seeing before I raise her up. And then continue on with filling up with just horticultural grit. This is actually the grit of my choice. I just don't know if I have enough and if I don't then well the other ones will come into play. <laughs> 
And because I've left her a tad lower in the pot, I've got enough grit to go around, which makes this whole thing exactly how I wanted it. How effective it's going to be? Who knows? Fiddling that root into the basket, that root tip may fail, but I do hope that you will keep your fingers crossed with me and for my falcata, because I don't want to lose her through stem rot. I've got this nice hollow between the stem and the ceramis, so all of that is kind of back in play. <laughs> I think I did a pretty good job there. The question is, will that root tip continue growing? At least I have another little root tip that is starting at the base of the fan that appears to be growing in a direction really nice and down, and that's where I would like that root to go in case the other one starts to go aerial on me again. So the leka at the bottom was a little bit wet just to make sure that those older water roots didn't touch dry leka. So one little flush, and then hopefully this kipana is going to stay in the collection. There is an icon right at the bottom of this video. It hasn't got the fingers crossed icon, but there is a thumbs up. So I would appreciate it if you like this video. And if you would subscribe to the channel, my goodness, consider yourself welcome. I appreciate the vote of confidence and I thank you for watching. Wishing you a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.